So today we're here to talk about the Blue Flower by Penelope Fitzgerald. This is our choice for April for the 12 books for 2022. I own this hardback edition by Everman's Library. It is actually a collection that includes three of uh, Penelope Fitzgerald's novels. Apart from The Blue Flower, it also includes The Bookshop and The Gate of Angels. Now, spoiler alert, I really enjoy The Blue Flower, so I want to read The Bookshop and The Gate of Angels and possibly other novels by this great British author. By the way, all the books I'm going to mention in this video are going to be linked to in the description box. So if you want to buy any of them, and I'm going to try to link to the editions that I show you, and if there are other editions or if the editions that I own um, are not available for whatever reason, I will link to something as similar to it as possible. And why is it important that you go check out those links? Well, if you like my channel and if you would like to support me in a small way, you can buy your books using those, those links. Please don't feel obliged to do that. Watching my videos is enough support as far as I'm concerned. But if you want to give me that extra support, if you buy your books from my links, um, I will get a tiny commission from the sale, but it will not cost you any extra. So that's a nice way for you to support my channel. Anyway, let's go back to this great book, The Blue Flower. So The Blue Flower first came out in 1995. And as I said, it's a novel by the British author Penelope Fitzgerald. What is this novel about? Well, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You can watch this review. And by the way, any of my reviews without fearing spoilers, OK? But what this novel is about in very general, non-spoilery terms well, it is a fictional treatment, a fictional approach to the early life of a German uh, from Saxony named Friedrich von Hand Hardenberg. <laughs> That's quite hard to say. Friedrich von Hardenberg. No. Friedrich von Hardenberg. And uh, who is this guy? Well, we're in the uh, late 18th century and Friedrich, I'm not going to say his last name again, uh, would become or will become a poet later. And he will be better known under the pseudonym Novalis. So Novalis is a key poet in the Romantic movement, not only in Germany, but in Europe. But this novel is not about Novalis. It's about the young man who would later, after the events that are told in this novel, become the poet. So because Friedrich was a historical figure, a real person, and the novel is set during his early life in the late section of the 18th century, this is a historical novel. It is a very short historical historical novel. I mean, this volume that I own, just bear in mind, it's not that thick. And bear in mind that this has three different novels, including The Blue Flower. So it's, it is a very short novel. You can read it almost in one setting. I don't think I did that. I think I read it in different settings. And I'll go into why in a minute, because there is something in the structure of this novel that makes you want to read it like that and not sit and read the whole thing in just one sitting. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of this novel or how the story is told, okay? So this novel is written as a series of vignettes, which are often not even full scenes. So you'll get like almost like bits and pieces. So short scenes or sections of the scene. And despite that, Despite that, it is easy to follow. And if you get into the rhythm of the novel, and that's why I think it's important that you sometimes take a break from it and are in the right mindset uh, when you read it, um, is important. And I think that having your expectations set correctly is important. That's why I'm sharing that information with you because I did know that before I read it. And it helped me knowing that the novel was just short vignettes. In fact, there are 55 of them. So the book is divided into 55 very, very short chapters. Some of them are not even two pages long. So you can think of this novel as an expressionistic work of art. You get that kind of short bursts of 
little bits of scenes and conversations and things like that but it is not hard to follow despite that and that's part of the genius of this novel. So at the time during those seven years Friedrich is just a student and he studies history, philosophy and laws at several universities in Germany. I think he goes to Jena, Leipzig and uh, Wittenberg. So he goes to different universities, he studies different things. So we're dealing with a character here who has that thirst of knowledge but he's not happy with just one version or with one discipline. That's why he studies different disciplines and he goes to different universities and this is important and here we're dealing with a young man I mean he's an adult he knows what he's doing he knows a lot he knows what's going on he has a lot of knowledge about the different disciplines that he studies but he's not a professional yet he hasn't embarked on his professional life yet he doesn't even know exactly what he will do so that's interesting because of course as we read this novel now we know that he will later become a hugely famous poet but he doesn't know that himself. The Blue Flower is also a love story. It is the love story between Friedrich and a girl named Sophie von Kuhn. Now Sophie it's a lot younger than um, Friedrich and you know this can be a bit difficult to stomach for modern readers because of course our customs have changed and our laws have changed but we are dealing in historical fiction here and that's just accurate. This is what happened and it was in front upon, it was completely normal. So Sophie von Kuhn is a lot younger. She's a child, we would now call her a child. I don't think back then she would have been considered a child, but she is 12 at the beginning of the novel and she is barely 15 at the end of the novel. And this novel in part, it's not like the whole novel is not about their love story but in part it is about the love story between the two characters and it is a tragic love story. A lot of people know why because he's a historical figure. All you need to do is go to Wikipedia or Google um, Novalis and you'll find out what happened uh, to Sophie and what happened to them and how their love story was. I think that if you know that going in that really will not spoil this novel because it's about how Penelope Fitzgerald deals with that, how she tells the story that matters. And also the story is not told in a conventional way. So it's so fragmentary, so expressionistic that, you know, the plot is not really uh, the main thing here. I am fascinated by Penelope Fitzgerald. She's a writer, she's no longer with us and she's a writer that I discovered many years ago and I read a couple of her novels. It was quite a long time ago so I don't really remember much which is not a bad thing necessarily because it means that now I can reread those novels that I had read and also discover of course new novels by her and enjoy them because I don't really remember much. But she's a fascinating writer Penelope Fitzgerald because she published her first novel when she was uh, 60. That was in 1977 and she was 60. So she had a long life, she had a lot of different jobs, different career paths and then she became a professional writer at the age of 60 and, and there's something about that that I just love. So I'm here to tell you that Penelope Fitzgerald is a fascinating writer and that I wish more people would read well, The Blue Flower or any of her other novels and discuss them here on YouTube or elsewhere. The Blue Flower is a beautiful book. Um, who should read this book or who is this book for? That's kind of hard to say because this book is very difficult to discuss and I hope I'm not doing such a bad job here uh, because it, it is really challenging. It's one of the most challenging books to talk about that I've discussed so far here on this channel and I've talked about a lot of different writers and books. But okay, so who should read this book? Well, if you're interested in the Romantic era in Europe, uh, I think this could be a great introduction to that because you can see what ideologies were in the air, what people were thinking, where their uh, sensibilities uh, lay in the late 18th uh, century and then in the beginning of the 19th century. It's also great as a portrait of life in a small town in Saxony specifically but okay you can say a small town in Central Europe 
at the end of the 18th century. There's also a portrait of a loving family, the poet's family, and uh, his relationship with his brother, with one of his brothers particularly, is beautiful. And you can also see how health issues were and how they affected uh, people's lives back in the 18th century. Uh, there is a lot packed into this short novel. There's poetry, there's history, there's politics. It's all packed so well in such a small novel. It's such a, this novel is such a great achievement. So, you know, I loved the portrait of the poet's family here and also his love story with Sophie. And remember, he's not a poet yet. I keep saying the poet because we know he will become a poet and he was a poet. But only after the events uh, recounted in this novel, okay? Now, I don't read historical novels generally. I wouldn't say that that's a genre that I love. And the reason for that is that because I'm not really that interested in monarchs or aristocrats, but this novel is not about any of those boring people. So this is my kind of historical novel, I would say. It is set in a provincial, in a small provincial town. It's far from the center of arts and politics. And yet, arts and politics are part of this novel. And remember, this is set in the late 18th century. And what was happening in Europe at the end of the 18th century? Well, of course, the French Revolution, which wasn't happening in Saxony, but it was happening in France, which is really not that far. And so how does the French Revolution play a part in this short novel? Well, you'll have to read to find out, but it does. There's a lot of discussion about politics and ideas that are relevant to this day, because remember that our political regimes, our republics, even our constitutional monarchies that many of us li uh, live under now, they all came from the French Revolution. They all came from this very exciting and radical and revolutionary time. And not only in Europe, also in the US, also in Latin America and in many other parts of the world. This is also the portrait of an artist or an artistic genius in formation. And that's great because I spend the novel looking for clues. How is this guy going to become the poet that I know he will become? You know, and I think that's something interesting to have in mind as you read this very strange, very unique, very specific, very delightful novel, The Blue Flower. It is a great read, but it is very challenging to discuss. So please read it. I hope I've made sense. Uh, but even if you're not sure you understand what I'm saying about this novel, read it and then watch this video. And I think what I've been saying will make more sense, or at least I would hope so. So yes, this book is hard to describe, so I'm really sorry. But the best thing about it and the best thing you can do is to read it, which I hope you will do. And because this was my choice or our choice for the 12 books for 2022, let me tell you what book we are going to be reading in May. And that's going to be Elizabeth Costello by J.M. Coetzea. So I'm hoping that this will be a more straightforward uh, narrative. So Elizabeth Costello is an Australian writer of international renown, famous principally for an early novel that established her reputation. She has reached the stage where her remaining function is to be venerated and applauded. Her life has become a series of engagements in sterile conference rooms throughout the world, a private consciousness obliged to reveal itself to a curious public, the presentation of a major award at an American college where she is required to deliver a lecture, a sojourn as the writer in residence on a cruise liner, a visit to her sister, a missionary in Africa, who is receiving an honorary degree, an occasion which both recognize as the final opportunity for effecting some form of reconciliation and a disquieting appearance at a writer's conference in Amsterdam where she finds a subject of her talk unexpectedly amongst the audience. She has made her life's work the study of other people, yet now it is she who is the object of scrutiny. But for her, what matters is the continuing search for a means of articulating her vision and the verdict of future generations. Well, this sounds amazing. I love J.M. Coetzea. He's one of my favorite 
writers. One of my all-time favorite books is his novel Disgrace, but I also love other novels by him. So I'm really looking forward to reading this novel. I hope that you will read along with me. I will be back here to discuss it at the end of May with another video review. But of course, in the meantime, I'll be back with more video reviews and other bookish content. And I hope you join me for those. Take care. Bye for now.